be with you. And welcome to God. As we think of Advent, we think of preparation for the nativity of our Lord, but it's especially a time as well to think about the incarnation, the Word made flesh. Uh, as Son of God and Son of Mary is being born into this world, born by uh, Mary, truly God and truly human for us. And so that's our theme. Uh, the series comes to us through Concordia Seminary, but especially Dr. Dale Meyer, who served as president of the seminary for many years. And so we'll be giving voice to uh, Dr. Meyer's uh, message. And when I say we, Kathy, thank you for uh, volunteering uh, this morning. It wasn't written this way, but we've kind of worked it out to have a, a reader's antiphonal kind of response at times as well. The theme of the day today, you can see it there in your folder, you have my word, based on John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. John 1 to 18, the broader theme, the word made flesh, provides a summary of the fourth gospel's themes. The verses are rich in light and life, truth and grace. They are some of the most important words ever written. And so our theme, you have my word. We begin with the invocation and call to worship. Let us stand as we are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, 
to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Upon this your confession, I as a called and ordained servant of the word announce God's grace to you. In the stead, by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We bow our heads for prayer. O Lord God, stir up your power and come among us, that we would receive Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, creator of the world, yet for whom no room was finally made in birth, that we would receive him anew and again as our Savior and Lord, the Word made flesh. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament lesson, Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Our epistle lesson, according to Hebrews Chapter 1. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Our holy gospel, we stand as we are able. From John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. As we sing the first two stanzas of our hymn of the day, we'll be standing for the final Trinitarian verse.
candle, we turn our attention to God's holy word in Jesus Christ. You may be seated. As St. John writes in the opening words, the prologue of his holy gospel, the word became flesh. You have my word. We need to turn that mic up or on. It's easy to become skeptical when someone says, you have my word, or when they give us their word. Well, why is that? Because we live too often in a world of what? Broken promises. Empty vows. I was listening just this past week to uh, sports radio. And you know, it's 24-7 now, sports. So uh, Tom Waddle has to fill in with some life things. And they were talking about some gifts for Christmas that aren't just things. And someone said, well, I invited my niece to come in couple years ago and that was the Christmas gift but I was sure to include the airplane voucher in the card because I didn't want it to be an empty promise that went unfulfilled too often promises are unfulfilled pledges are made with the best of intentions maybe not always with the best of intentions, and somehow forgot. Assurances given and then ignored. Words can be spoken with great fanfare. I'll always love you. We are BFFL, best friends for life. You can count on me. Till death us do part. But words can become, well, Dr. Meyer writes, like autumn leaves in the fall wind. That's why we're a bit squeamish when someone says, you have my word. This Advent, we're going to work our way through what becomes the gospel lesson for Christmas morning. Always, it's the same lesson. Not Luke 2, but Christmas morning, John chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. And God's biggest promise in John's introduction to his gospel is this. You have my word. The first verse. In the beginning was the word. And then verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. If that introduction is about anything, it's about the word, the promise of God. Now in its fullness, God's word, centered, alive, informed, interpreted by, living in Jesus Christ. We have God's word. And so, those verses 1 to 18, and they'll be unpacked throughout these weeks. This year, four worship services since we've moved to a Wednesday. Also, the week of Christmas will be meeting. Throughout this time, they provide a summary of John's themes and a lens through which we see everything that John writes and really the lens that is Jesus Christ that interprets all of scripture. Here is an overview of these verses. Jesus is the word. God becomes audible. He speaks. God is audible. Jesus is the life. God makes himself 
tangible. Not a vague thought, an abstract idea. Tangible God. Jesus is the light. God makes himself visible. Not detached or hidden in darkness. God is visible. Jesus is the Son. God makes himself knowable. You know, in the early days of the church, there was a movement called Gnosticism. And it was, well, we can gnosis, know God through this higher knowledge that God gives. And people have searched by their own lights for that kind of knowledge. And many have ended up, haven't we heard the word recently in our society? I'm not an atheist, they'll say. I'm more agnostic. I just don't think I can know God. God is not a mystery to solve. God is knowable in Jesus Christ. So what does it all mean? It means that because of Jesus, we can hear, tangibly experience the Lord's Supper, see and know God. Well, today's focus in this series is Jesus, the Word. God makes himself audible. The Word is connected to creation. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning, it takes us right back to Genesis chapter 1, which brings to mind that old baseball joke, right? Baseball sure is an old game, right? It was back right at the beginning. That's what the Bible says. In the big inning. I added that. That wasn't Dr. Meyer. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And, and John goes further. He uses, what, life, creation, light, and darkness. Let there be light. And there was light. You know, you walk into a darkened room and you know where the light switch is and nobody else in your group does and you go over to it and you're tempted to say, let there be light. <laughs> Sorry, Lord, I've done it a few times. But we know where the switch is. Our words can't do that. But God's word does. God's word created creation. And there's more in this promise of God, the power of God's word. Joshua 21 comes to mind. Not one word of all the good promises that the Lord has made has failed. Isaiah 40. Grass withers, flowers fade. But the word of our Lord stands forever. Psalm 119 we used to have that on the banner over here that would hang. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And here's the point. The most powerful force in all the world is, in fact, God's word. God in his word, called Abraham from Ur. They were worshiping, by the way, the moon gods there the darkness, but the light that would become Christ eventually was revealed as the line was established. God's word spoke to Moses from the burning bush, to Elijah in that still, quiet voice. God's word, as we have read in Sunday after Sunday in Ezekiel, Cause the great army to stand on their feet. God said it. That settles it. Faith believes it. 
We have God's word on it. The word is connected to God. The word was God, John says. More than just an utterance, a combination of letters, the word was God. The word is God. The word is Jesus. Not a kind of junior partner in the Trinity, but 100% actually really God. God tells Moses from the burning bush when he says, who should I say sent me? I am that I am. Yahweh, the I am. And it's in the Gospel of John seven times. The I am statements are there. I am the bread of life, the light of the world, the door, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life, the true vine. The word is connected to God. In fact, the word is God. The word is connected to us. In him was life, and that life was the light of people. The word is connected to creation. Let there be light, there was light. It's connected to God, but it's also connected to us. Dr. Meyer uses this illustration. I think many of us can relate to it. He says, uh, a clock for Christmas isn't exactly the kind of gift that thrills a 15-year-old boy. But I said, thank you, he writes, and I took it to my bedroom and put it on the nightstand and plugged it in. You remember those alarm clocks? It was a square-faced alarm clock, and its alarm could make the, the dogs howl all night. There was no snooze button, so to silence it, I had to pick it up and throw it across the room multiple times. <laughs> but you know, over time, he writes, I became attached to that square-faced alarm clock. Don't tell anyone, but I even took it to college with me. I liked my square-faced clock because of its light. It glowed in the dark. And let me tell you, when your room is dark, your best friend is light. Hmm. All of us know, don't we, in our lives about dark rooms, loneliness, depression. I've talked with many people just recently saying, well, I'm getting ready for the dark now time of winter. It's hard on me. I have that seasonal affective disorder. The darkness of emptiness or guilt. Shame. The darkness of anger. I thought about that just yesterday. I made the mistake recently of mentioning to one funeral home that I'm preparing for retirement. And the director said to me, oh, pastor, you'll be available then, <laughs> Pastor Ray. I said, well, yeah, but I'm full time. And, but if you have a Lutheran in the area, family, and I can make a connect with Christ Lutheran, I suppose, you know, give me a call. Well. This was the second funeral I've conducted for a community member in two weeks. Had to tell the director, that's a little too much, all right? But at the end of June, I'm not ready for full retirement, call me up. I'll be happy to help you out. At any rate, yesterday, 95 years young, Orlita Jordan and her husband, yet living, Ed, Moved 30 years ago for retirement, guess where, Ken and Sandy? Arkansas. Well, their family, some of them here, and I think we'll see family members in worship, as we did with the Ruff family two weeks before, and now subsequently have seen them. At any rate, I was asking about her, and they said, well, one of the qualities 
of her faith life. And she was a Sunday school teacher. She never missed worship. Sometimes her husband worked for the railroad. He took the car. They had one car. They would walk three quarters of a mile to church. But they made it. And for Advent, too. At any rate, I said, what about her faith life, her characteristics? They said, you know, so far as we know, she never expressed any hurtful anger. Not once. She might have felt it, but she never expressed it. I thought, wow, that's a real gift. Here, the darkness of anger. The darkness of cancer. The darkness of death. Pastor Barbara Hallstrand said to me on the way out of church, and it was a serious moment, she said, thank you for uh, praying for the families in Wisconsin whose loved ones were taken from them so atrociously, and for the survivors too. She said, I just found out that one of our relatives through marriage it was their little boy, eight years old, who died two years later from his injuries. Sometimes death is timely. For Orlita, 95 years old, for that youngster, to our lights, darkness. And it shows up. It shows up, that darkness, through the prince of darkness, pointing his accusing finger at us, mocking our feeble efforts at discipleship, our failed relationships, our fatal attractions. But when we are in the dark, real darkness, by faith we have light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The verb shine, it's a present tense. Dr. Meyer's a pretty good linguist. It doesn't mean it's shown or it will shine. It means whatever moment there is now, it's shining. It goes back to that interesting Hebrew in Exodus 3. Who should I say sent me? I am. And it's very unusual in Hebrew. It's I was, I am, and I will be, all at the same time. Reminds me of Helen Dewar, and we were sitting and talking about our 125th anniversary in 2013, Jan. And she said, how about Hebrews 13:8? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The darkness is present. It's not understood the light but it's not overcome the light. And so John prepares us for Good Friday, for that dark day. Nails, blood, sweat, tears, darkness. This is Advent. But you know, it's all going there. Mary always wears in depictions of art, the blue. In fact, you can order Mary Blue. If you want to order from a printer an invitation to a baptism, you can go to a printer and say, I want the script in Mary Blue. And they'll say, okay, because that's the title of the die. She always wears hopeful, but she often also wears either red or more commonly purple. Red and blue together. The sword will pierce your soul, Mary. It's pressing forward to the cross being born for humankind. The darkness will not overcome Jesus, but Savior and Lord, he will overcome the darkness of sin and death. And we have God's word on it. I love what the author did there with the swaddle. Notice the Lord's coming out of it. 
And Edward Ria Haas, I said, Ed, am I seeing something in that? He said, you betcha. That's the shroud being left aside at the resurrection. And so the words of Jesus, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Oh, what hope those words give. I saw it yesterday with the Jordan family. Even the skeptics, and I talked with them beforehand, one young man saying, I'm agnostic. His head came up with that, with those words. And he looked me square in the eye. God's word is powerful in Jesus Christ. And the invitation now in Advent is for us, and these are the words of Dr. Meyer, press hard into God's word in these days. When doubts arise, when guilt overwhelms, search the word of God. There's power and strength. There's Jesus himself in the midst of it. Receive it with trust in our Lord. Well, he tells a story here, but many of us can relate, especially if we're flying into Chicago from somewhere else, and we have a change of flight. If we're coming from the East Coast, it often goes through Atlanta, and that's a busy hub. And so we watch our timepiece and well, things are delayed. And we're thinking, I'm changing flights in Atlanta. Right, Jan? And you're thinking, I've got a connecting flight. Jan, you do a lot of traveling. You're thinking, where did I put my running shoes? <laughs> that is a huge place. <laughs> and it's getting late. And you're thinking, oh. Are they in my overnight bag? Where, where are those things? You're getting ready. Now, who do I have to call on the other end if I'm delayed? But then the loudspeaker on the plane comes on. You're running late. You haven't landed yet, but the pilot comes on. This is the pilot. I know many of you have tight connections, and we're flying into Atlanta. Relax. You will make them. We're holding your planes. The pilot gave you the word. Now you still might run a little bit, especially if you're Jan, you can do that. But you have the assurance. And God has given his to you. It's a word connected to creation and connected to God. Also that he can be forever connected to you and me. Connected to you as the light that shines, shines in your darkness. So let's this Advent slow down. Take a breath. There's no need to panic. God says. You have my word. And what an awesome word it is. His name? Jesus. Amen. And now the peace of God, which transcends all our understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ, our living Lord and Savior. Amen. We join now in the prayers of the church. We'll be praying responsively. Let us stand as we are able. Following our prayers, the Eucharistic liturgy and then continuous distribution will be beginning with the station on this side. And so you'll be ushered forward and then we'll move as a station to this side. If you prefer uh, communion where you're seated, please just remain and we'll uh, try to make sure that we uh, then uh, make our way out with uh, Holy Communion for you thereafter. And so we pray. 
Heavenly Father, hear us. Hear us as we praise you for the beauty and power of your word. Not one word of all the good promises that the Lord has made has failed. Your word is trustworthy and true. Grass withers and flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. Your word endures forevermore. My word will not return to me empty. Your word works, always doing what it says. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word shines in the darkness, and the darkness will never overcome it. And so, Lord, we continue to pray for those dear families in Wisconsin who are mourning deeply, commending beloved to you in the aftermath of the atrocity there. We pray as well for those who are recovering. Give hope, we pray, and strength. O oh Lord, we pray for the dear families in Michigan, Oxford, Michigan, who lost their children atrociously to murder yesterday. Hold in mercy and grace, give peace beyond understanding. And help, O oh Lord, and direct law enforcement and our judicial system for justice. Lord, we pray for the Jordan family, or Lita's family, for Ed and family. Called home to heaven in a more timely way, we would say, Lord, grant your mercy and your peace. And I pray that Jesus, word made flesh, your impact yesterday would truly be sensed and felt through this Advent time within that family as they continue to commend beloved Orlita. To Lord, we pray for prayers requested today and renewed for Claudette, surgery upcoming, for Corbin, second round of chemo, for Mitch, therapy today, and a blessed way forward, and we would ask restoration. For Mark Keslauskas, just received word that procedure, trach procedure, is pending now. For, O oh Lord, ongoing, we pray, a treatment for respiratory health, we would ask, and strength in the days ahead. We pray for Mary, Lord God, for favorable results of test. For Suzanne, as you direct and guide in her calling and vocation. And now, Lord, in this moment of silence, we lift up our personal petitions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our responsive prayer continues. Heavenly Father, we will slow down and take a deep breath. There is, in fact, no need to panic. All things are working for our good and your glory. We know because we have your word, and his name is Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Lord God, we are not worthy to have you come under the eaves of our homes, yet you come to us, the God of our salvation, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You give your word made flesh to us tangibly in this holy supper of communion, Christ's body given, his blood shed for forgiveness, life, and salvation. So we pray by the Holy Spirit, prepare us, in repentant faith to receive our Lord and to go forth renewed in him, even as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We stand as we are able. The body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. O Lord God, with Simeon, we respond in prayer. Now you let your servants depart in heavenly peace. For we have seen the glory of your redeeming grace, a light to lead the Gentiles to your holy hill and the glory of your people, your chosen Israel. Send us forth now, O Lord, in that light to reflect, to let it shine to all. The darkness has not overcome it. So send us forth with confidence and hope, with Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our benediction is responsive, and then our closing verses. John writes his gospel so that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing we may have life in his name. Go forth in his name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for in his name we have life, abundant life, joyful life, eternal life. Amen. be seated just for a moment or two.